Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Alex Proskurin and this is the first lecture of our lecture series in financial machine learning, which is called Feature Importance. So today we are going to uh, describe and speak on various uh, algorithms such as mean decrease impurity, mean decrease accuracy, single feature importance, clustered feature importance, model fingerprint algorithm. We also discuss uh, how shapely values feature importance is used and also line feature importance. So there is a very great uh, quote by Marcus Lopez de Prado, which, which says backtesting is not a research tool, feature importance is. So we have discussed how to use uh, various financial data structure to, pro to process our TIG data, how to label the data set, how to create models like bagging classifier and uh, random force classifier. But all these actions are actually uh, only the uh, preparations for the final and the most important part and that's where your research starts, which is feature importance research. So what feature importance research is aimed at is to understand the key factors which drive the performance of your strategy. So if, for example, the cross-validation score of your model is relatively good, you would like to understand what are the key factors which drive the performance of the score. Maybe you can add extra features on top of that or some of the features uh, drag down the performance of your score. Or maybe, for example, on some of the regimes, your model works as expected, but on some of them, the performance starts to uh, drop significantly. So probably you can add extra features which can compensate um, this um, decrease. And that's what feature importance analysis is all about. So, Let's discuss uh, the algorithms which we will uh, we will describe today. MDI, which is called mean decrease impurity, MDA, mean decrease algorithm, um, accuracy algorithm, single feature importance, which is called also SFI. We'll also discuss clustered feature importance, which is called CFI. We will discuss model fingerprint, SHEP, and live feature importance algorithms. So let's start with the, one of the most widely used and widespread algorithm, which is called mean decrease impurity. So mean decrease impurity, or MDI, is a fast explanatory importance in sample uh, method specific to tree-based classifier like random force classifier or decision tree classifier. At each node of each decision tree, the selected feature splits the subset it received in such a way that impurity is decreased. So here you can see a small example from sklearn, which uses extra trees classifier. And if you take a look at the extra trees forest classifier, it has the, ob the um, uh, field value, which is called feature importances. And this is actually mean decrease impurity feature importances. So when we say mean decrease impurity feature importance, this is actually the feature importance out of sklearn's uh, model feature importance. So here for each tree uh, from feature importance, uh, we can get the MDI feature importance uh, to find the mean value of this mean decrease impurity, the standard deviation, and to make a plot of that. So let's discuss several drawbacks of mean decrease, impu uh, mean decrease impurity algorithm. So the first thing which we face are so-called masking, effect, masking effects. So masking effects take place when some features are systematically ignored by tree-based classifiers in favor of others. So uh, the reason for that is that because there are several features we, which may be correlated and the tree-based classifier will extract one information from, the, uh, uh, from that feature. And because the second feature is correlated to uh, uh, the other, it's impurity feature importance will be very low, despite the fact that this feature can also bring lots of value to our out of sample score. So in order to avoid uh, mean decrease impurity masking effect drawback, you can set max features equal to one when you use either sklearn or Begin classifier class. And this way only one random feature is considered for each tree. In this case, you can somehow tackle the problem of masking facts in MDI. The second problem with MDI is actually the problem which face many uh, 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 
statistical inference um, feature importances like t-values and p-values is that this procedure is obviously in sample. So every feature will have some importance even if they don't have the predictive power whatsoever because the algorithm will always find the pattern uh, on in sample even if, even if there is no pattern in that algorithm, in that uh, data set. The third problem with MDI is that it actually cannot be generalized uh, to uh, non-tree-based classifiers. So if you have SVM or linear regression, you need to come up with some kind of um, importance algorithm because mean decrease impurity is only about tree-based classifiers. And the uh, second problem, the, the, the fourth problem are so-called uh, substitution effect, which we have also uh, discussed. Uh, so when you have correlated features, they uh, suffer from substitution effects and I'm MDI dilute the importance of substitute features because of their interchangeability. The importance of two identical features will be halved as they are randomly chosen with equal probability. So in this case, even if you have two quite good features, their um, importance will um, will be in the down of your importance table because they just divided uh, the importance which they have, despite the fact that they can actually bring lots of values value to you. So now let's move into the second algorithm, which is called mean decrease accuracy. So how mean decrease accuracy uh, feature importance wo works? Actually, mean decrease accuracy is uh, also called permutation feature importance algorithm. So uh, let's see uh, the um, steps of this algorithm. So on the first step, the algorithm fits a machine learning model and drives its cross-validation score on the original data set, X and Y. After that, for each feature from X, the algorithm randomly permutates the feature value to create a modified feature matrix XF. So we take the first feature and just randomly shuffle the values of inside of that feature. After that, the algorithm measures cross-validation performance of a model on modified data set. And the importance of feature F equals to the difference between the original cross-validation score and modified cross-validation score. So here we can see a uh, slide picture which describe this process. So for this feature, we'll randomly uh, shuffle the values and measure how our cross-validation score either increased or dropped. And if our the feature is very important, the most probably is that our cross-validation score was, will be decreased massively because we just simply took all the information, we just randomly spread the information uh, between, um, between rows of our data set. In this case, the feature uh, does not bring any uh, information at all. And in this way, our, uh, this feature will, uh, this modified feature uh, will uh, dilute the uh, performance and predictions of our algorithm and the cross validation score will be decreased. And in this way, this feature is important because we just took a very important piece of information out of our data set. So that's how mean decrease accuracy uh, feature importance works. So several uh, notes on mean decrease accuracy algorithm. MDA is based on out of sample score rather than in sample compared to MDI. And this is a very important advantage of this approach because we move from in sample inference to out of sample um, feature importance because at the end we are interested in our out of sample uh, scores, not in sample scores. And that's why MDA is so powerful because it helps us to choose that features which are useful to predict the future rather than the current state. This method can be applied to any classifier, not only tree-based classifiers. And this is also a very good advantage because now the feature importance algorithm becomes much more uh, universal. MDA, despite the fact that MDA is called mean decrease accuracy, MDA is not limited to accuracy at a sole performance score. So you can use any score which you would like uh, to use uh, in MDA. So you can use F1 score, precision score, log loss, 
if you have regression setting, you can use mean absolute error, mean squared error. So actually any score can be used in MDA. Like MDI, so now let's talk about some drawbacks. Like MDI, the procedure is also susceptible to substitution effects in the presence of correlated features. Given two identical features, MDA always considers one to be redundant to the other. And unfortunately, MDA will make both features appear to be outright irrelevant if they, if they are critical. So still, the, uh, this uh, algorithm does not uh, solve the problem of substitution effect. And later in this lecture, we'll, we'll discuss how to modify uh, mean decrease al algorithm uh, accuracy, um, mean decrease accuracy algorithm to take into account substitution effects. Unlike MDI, it is possible that MDA concludes that all features are not important. That is because MDA is based on auto-sample score. So, and it is actually a good uh, point about MDA because if your features are not important and actually you just, uh, I don't know, overfit. So if you massively underfit, the, uh, the MDA score will say that you don't have any predictive information available and you need to either change the data set, change the approach, or change the feature set because there is no information which I can extract on that. And the sixth pro tip for using mean decrease accuracy comes from a paper which uh, from Journal of Financial uh, Data Science uh, by uh, Ernie Chen, which says that you should average the mean decrease accuracy algorithm by using various random seeds and average result. Because in this case, you stable out the, those performance scores. Because mean decrease accuracy randomly shuffles the feature uh, value uh, by using, for example, one fixed random state, it is a very good guideline to stabilize the uh, importance of your features by using, for example, 20 or 100 various random seeds and to average the result. In this case, you can be quite sure that the importance of your feature is not a subject to your random seed which, which you have chosen. And it is quite, um, I would say, stable and uh, long-term. Now let's talk about single feature importance. So single feature importance, which is called SFI, is a cross-section predictive importance out of sample method. It computes the out of sample performance score in each feature in isolation. So what it does, it is quite similar to MDA, but what it does, it just fits the fits your model when the model uses just one feature um, as your both uh, in your train set and measures the cross validation score um, of your uh, model of your model. So unlike MDI and MDA, no substitution effects takes in place since only one feature is taken into the consideration at a time. This is the one advantage of this approach, but the disadvantage of single feature importance is actually quite serious because SFI does not take into, into the account interaction effects. And that's one of the reasons why actually machine learning is so powerful because it takes into the account not only nonlinear effects, but also interaction effects. And when you measure single feature importance, you measure them in isolation. And uh, in this case, uh, your uh, single uh, feature, uh, feature importance may say that some of the features are not informative, but actually they are informative just because they are a great addition to a strong features um, from our data set. So there is a, a good uh, analogy with a football team. So there are several players like uh, strikers or forwards who actually score goals and many players uh, and many players and many analysts take a look at them because they do yield result. But they cannot give us a result if you de don't have either defenders or goalkeepers or midfielders because they uh, help your strikers to score a goal. So if you create I would say single feature importance as efficiency of the player on the, on the pitch, it would say that the only players you should take into your team are strikers. But it is quite obvious that you, if you have a team of strikers only, you will uh, with a high probability lose. 
because other features and other players like midfielders they actually create the complex um, the, the complex uh, team and uh, the complex um, um, the, the complex and the full structure of your team, right? While MDA will say that both goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders uh, are extremely important and you should use them. So what MDA actually does, it measures what happens if we take away that player out of our team and how the performance of our team will change if the player on the pitch will just make random moves and uh, or either do nothing or, or stand on the pitch. And if we are like able to measure how the um uh, the percentage of wins of our team drops if this player is not present it means that this player is extremely important for our team and that's a the proxy to mda so we we take away this that piece of information in mda feature importance and uh, based on that we uh, measure the uh, importance of feature and how much of information it gives to our model now let's take a look at numerical toy example. So consider a binary classification problem, which is composed of 40 features, where five of them are informative, 30 of them are redundant, and five, and five of, the, of them are noisy. So let's say that informative features have I prefix and are used to generate labels. Redundant features marked as with R prefix are those which are formed by adding Gaussian noise to a randomly chosen informative feature, and noisy features are those that are not used to generate labels. There is a small uh, note uh, on this stage, which uh, will be which uh, make the further explanations clearer. If you have I1 feature and you have R1 feature, it does not necessarily mean that the redundant feature R1 was made out of I1. So there is no linkage between uh, those prefixes. So let's take a look at the MDI result. Actually, what we can see here uh, is on this numerical example is that uh, it, it, it managed to capture some informative features like I1, I2, I4. But as you can see, several redundant features are in the top because of masking and substitution effects, which MDI feature importance suffers from. But we have also uh, understood that actually here in this example, MD, MDI managed to um, estimate uh, th that non-informative features, which are just pure noise, are in the bottom uh, level of our MDI uh, feature importance table. But you, what you can see also is that still those features have some positive feature importance. And that's one of the reasons uh, why MDI is not the best method for feature importance, but because even for non-informative features, it will generate some kind of feature importance. Now let's go into MDA. So as you can see, for noisy features, our feature importance is somewhere around zero. So like MDA uh, algorithm just uh, purged all non-informative features into the bottom table uh, saying that they are not informative. But what, what we can also see that this algorithm managed to find informative features, I2, I1, I4, but still some of the redundant features are in top values because they are strongly correlated with real informative features. So now let's analyze and understand in the next lecture how to tackle those type of substitution effect and uh, understand how we can actually find those informative features in informative features in numerical example by using cluster feature importance approach and why it is so powerful to tackle substitution effect, especially in financial machine learning.